We're now going to take a look at uh, solutions for convective boundary conditions under transient conduction for three different shapes. We're going to look at a slab, a infinite cylinder, and a sphere. So in the previous segment what we did is we looked at the semi-infinite plate for three different boundary conditions and we came up with solutions. Uh, it, it was using a similarity variable and a similarity solution. Uh, but in this case there are other solutions. We'll be looking at approximations uh, and it's actually a, a series solution but we look at the first few terms and, and that converges re relatively quickly. And so the solutions we're going to look at will be in the forms of charts and in terms of a approximate solution using the equations. Before we can get to the solutions, however, what we need to do, we need to introduce the nomenclature that we're going to be using for these solutions. So that's what we're going to be doing in this segment. And then in the subsequent segments, we'll look uh, step by step. We'll begin with the slab, then we'll look at the cylinder and then the sphere. So the geometry that I refer to as the slab, which is probably not technically correct, but it's an infinite plate 2L thick. And what we're going to be doing, we're going to be solving for temperature, first of all, at the midplane as a function of time. And from that, we will be able to get the spatial temperature. So temperature at some point off of the midplane at a specific time. And the last thing we'll be able to calculate is the heat loss from this slab uh, up to a certain point in time, whatever point in time we are examining. Now that's the infinite plate, 2L thick, and as I mentioned we're also going to be looking at a cylinder. And just like for the slab, uh, we will start by being able to determine the center line temperature. And from that, we'll be able to estimate the spatial temperature distribution as a function of radial location. And then, just like for the slab, we are going to be able to evaluate the heat loss. And the last shape that we will look at is that of the sphere. And just like for the previous two, we will have the exact same three things that we will be able to estimate. Okay, so those are the shapes that we're going to be looking at. And what I will do now is let's go through and take a look at the nomenclature. The nomenclature is very important uh, when solving these problems, beginning with the infinite plate. So the infinite plate is 2L thick and X is denoted from the center line of our infinite plate. And in this T naught is going to be the center line temperature. And we will introduce a variable X star and that is going to be our spatial location, non-dimensionalized, divided by the length scale L. And the length scale is just L. And so that is the infinite plate looking at the cylinder. Okay, so the cylinder is going to have an outer radius R0, and we will be interested when we look at the spatial temperature at location R, radial location R. And just like for uh, the infinite plate, we had X star. Here we will have R star, which is going to be R divided by the outer radius. And the length scale that we deal with here 
is just the outer radius of our cylinder, R0. And finally, for the sphere, the geometry that we will be using is as follows. Okay, so we're interested in what is going on at some radial location R. The outer radius is R0, just like we had for the cylinder. T0 is the center line temperature. R star is the non-dimensionalized radial location, non-dimensionalized by the characteristic length scale, which in this case is R0, the outer radius of our sphere. Okay, so those are the, uh, so the some of the temperatures and spatial uh, variables that we will have in our solution. Now, a couple of other things that we need to be aware of, and those are temperatures. We've already looked at the center line temperature, T0, but we have other temperatures, the initial temperature, and that's going to be the temperature at tau or T less than zero. So before we change the convective boundary condition, T infinity and H, that describes the convective environment. So we assume that there is no convection at the beginning. And then when we start, we uh, expose our, uh, either the slab, the cylinder or the sphere to this new convective environment, T infinity H. T naught, we already saw, and that is the center line temperature. And then we introduce some uh, values of theta, which are differences in temperature. And theta could either be the temperature at a given location, so spatial and time, minus the free stream. That's if we're dealing with the slab. Or if we're dealing with either the cylinder or the sphere, it would be expressed in the following way, where we'd be evaluating temperature at a radial location. Theta i, that is going to be our initial temperature, minus the free stream. Theta naught is going to be the center line temperature minus the free stream. And we can also have a theta star and that is going to be theta divided by theta i, or the initial temperature difference. Other numbers that we will be working with, we have a couple of non-dimensional numbers that are very important in, in heat transfer and especially transient heat transfer. And those are the Fourier number And it is given the symbol capital F O, and it is the thermal diffusivity times time divided by our characteristic length scale squared. So it could either be L or R naught. And another number that we have, we saw this earlier when we were looking at the lump capacitance method. It is the bio number, and that is BI and is the convective heat transfer coefficient times some characteristic length scale divided by the thermal conductivity of the solid that we are examining. So those are two other numbers that we'll be using. And then finally, uh, we'll be evaluating heat loss in the solids. And heat loss is referenced to some uh, value Q0, and what that is, rho CV, so that is basically MC times delta T, and the delta T is going to be the initial minus the free stream. So that's basically the total change, potential change in energy, possible change I should say, going from the initial state to the new free stream state, and ultimately in time the entire solid will eventually go to the value of T infinity, but that's after all the transients have gone away. So those are some of the uh, values that we're going to be using for the analysis here. And what we're going to do in the next uh, three segments, we're going to look, uh, starting with the infinite plate, and I will give you the approximate equations as well as the charts, which are called the Heisler charts. And then we'll do the same for the cylinder and then for the sphere. And then in the next lecture, what we're going to do is we're going to solve a problem with a sphere 
uh, using both the approximate technique that we'll look at as well as the highest bar charts. So that's where we're going.